What is going on guys today? I have quite the video for you. Now, a couple of months ago, I made a video showing you guys how to install a custom carbon fiber wheel with TTRS or Audi R8 style buttons on an A3, S3 and Audi RS3. And it's actually starting to do incredibly well. Now, a big warning I had made was when installing this wheel, when it came time to remove this shift knob and you actually got it off, it was to not press this button when this shift knob was off the car or you would end up getting this stuck. Now listen closely on this next part. Slide the leather all the way up and turn the plastic piece on the bottom counterclockwise. It only goes one way. Carefully pull up from the bottom with a bit of force. Do not, and I repeat, do not press the shift button in at all during the removal process or even after you have it off the car or you will have a really hard time putting it back on. Now, like I showed in that video, it is possible to remove the shift knob on an A3, S3, or RS3 without pressing that button. It's actually quite easy. However, there are times at some point where somebody is bound to press that button, and that is my friend Sam. So huge shout out to Sam for pressing this button, otherwise I wouldn't have been able to make this video. You see, while Sam was watching my assembly video on how to install the Audi RS3 aftermarket carbon fiber wheel, he managed to press the button on his RS3 shift knob. And fortunately, he was able to send it to me to make this video for you guys. So in today's video, I'm gonna be showing you how to fix this because I know it can get scary. What Sam ended up doing was purchasing the Black Forest Industries uh, gear shift knob, which you can do too if you don't wanna do this method. But I'm gonna show you another way, fairly intricate but simple way to fix this knob, the original Audi RS3 knob, as you guys can see here. This is kind of the problem you get left with. You get the shift knob and it's kind of a loose button and we don't want that because you can't use it. So I'm gonna show you kind of how to fix this uh, in a second. Now I wanna unbox this and show you a bit more in depth as to what the actual problem is. Now hopefully yours back home, your shift knob is not as disassembled as this one is, but if it is, this is gonna be a bit more in depth on how to repair or fix this and put it back to the way it should be. Now, Sam had said when he was trying to fix this up, he managed to unscrew or get the, the, the springs to pop out. And I'm gonna show you, uh, hopefully, how to put these springs back in as well as reassemble everything. Now, he has this taken off, but theoretically yours back home could have the leather sheath over it here, that little uh, shift guard, but um, it really doesn't matter. This is what we're gonna have to, to focus on right now. Now, as you guys can see, where he had tried to pry this open. I'm gonna show you, yeah, you can really see where he tried to pry it open. I'm gonna show you how to fix this and reset this back to how it's supposed to be. Now, the first thing you need to do is pop this out like that. That's the first step. The second is you can see this little thing here. Think of it like the uvula for your shift knob. We're gonna need to reset that. We're gonna have to pull this out and you're gonna hear a click and that sets it back into place. And then we're gonna have to figure out how to put those uh, springs back in because without the springs, this is gonna still be loose. And we want this tight on here. Uh, so we're gonna have to get those back in. So what you're trying to do here is grab a hold of the little flap that's behind this and you can see right there, right up there, that's what we're gonna try to grab and we wanna pull it forward so that we hear a click. That click locks this into place and in order to do that, we're gonna use some pliers. Now it's hard to show you like this on camera, but theoretically, when you turn it upside down like that, it'll flip it into place and make it easier to grab. So let me adjust the camera. All right, so you can see letting gravity do the work. When we flip it like that, you can now see what we're trying to grab. And what you wanna do is use your pliers and right there, grab a hold of that piece and we're gonna pull down and you're gonna listen for the click, ready? Just like that, that was the click. And now, as you guys can see, this is in place and not moving. So if we were to put this down, you can see it'll only go this far in. No longer will it fully clip in, I'll show you again. That's the problem. If you clip it like that, it'll fully go flush. So again, open it up like this, flip it over. You'll see the little tab back there. You're gonna grab it, pull it in just like that. And now as you can see the furthest, this clips in is like that. The next thing we're gonna have to do 
is figure out how to put the springs back in. Now, hopefully those back home don't have to deal with this problem and it doesn't have to go that far. And literally clicking this would be all you need to do. Obviously there'd be tension on here. So you'd wanna, you know, pull this up real hard, maybe shove something through it like that just to lock it in place. And then you'd be able to get your screw, your, you know, your little needle nose pliers in there to pull it up. But for this circumstance where I don't have that, I'm gonna show you now where to put those springs. Now they attach right here on this bar. And then as far as I can tell, they're gonna hook, and this is gonna be the hard part, they're gonna hook around right here. And I'll show you, but you can see those two spots. It's gonna be hard for me to, to point out without a focusing, but right there and right there, you wanna circle it around those two areas right there. And I will be back shortly to show you what it looks like after they're connected. Now, as far as I understand, the dealer Audi won't fix this for you. And they might even tell you that it's like completely broken and you'll need to purchase a new one, which is several hundreds of dollars. So no fault of their own, because even at the factory, these parts come preloaded or like pre-tensioned. And if you look at this photo, you can see there's a red stick. And what that does is it locks it in a place so that this button doesn't access accidentally go off during transportation. Now, once that red stick is removed, they can then force it onto the shifter, onto the shifter mechanism, and then, and only then do you touch the button. So check it out, using these tweezers here, I was able to put the springs around those two little pieces over there. The next step, you can see one and two. Those are the two spots you wanna put the springs around. The next step is we're gonna to have to connect those springs to this bar right here. Now, after a bunch of playing around and using this, this to, to loop it around the bottom, and then actually using the needle nose pliers to hold it because they kept slipping out with this. So you need something with grooves to actually hold the, uh, the springs attached. You can see we have now officially put those back on and connected to the top there. So we have them wrapped around that bar and you can see they are wrapped on the ground right there. And these are what is holding tension to this button. And you have officially fixed your RS3 or whatever car you have uh, shift knob. And now it is fully good in place. And then all you have to do is slide this back on and then you're ready to push this and you, you'll be okay. But remember, it has to be on and tightened on the bottom before you can use this. So just keep that in mind. But you have now officially fixed your shift knob. Oh, also before I forget, let's say, you know, by chance this manages to go completely flat on you. Well, how would you fix that? Well, you want to pry this up using some tape and you can see this is where he got stuck and started using, you know, gouging this. You could put some tape in here, pull this up like that and get it out like this. That's how you'd want to do it. And then you want to take a screwdriver or something of sort and rest it like this. You can see you could put a bar completely across it and that would hold it in place for you to then take your tweezers and grab this little tab right in here and pull it out and you'd be good to go. And again, that is how you could fix this. So guys, that is gonna be it for today's video. So definitely make sure to smash the like button, turn on post notifications and subscribe. And if you haven't already, make sure to check out my other videos on how to install an aftermarket carbon fiber steering wheel, how to install aftermarket paddle shifters, or even how to install TTRS Audi R8 buttons. The links to installing this, the buttons, as well as the paddle shifters are all in the description down below and on my channel. And if you guys have any other questions or problems with your Audi RS3, A3, or F3, let me know down in the comments below as well. I know a lot of you guys also have problems with this trim here starting to fade. It hasn't happened to mine yet, but if you want to see how to remove this, I will show you that as well. Like I said, let me know down in the comments below. Otherwise, I'll see you guys in the next video. And yet again, huge shout out to Sam for sending me his shift knob because without it, I wouldn't be able to make this video. Peace.